explain a little bit about this rocket you got here. Where did it come from? Okay, this rocket engine came from Rocketdyne out in California. We picked it up surplus and uh, when I talked to the guy that used to work with it, it had a thrust of 700 pounds using exotic hypergolic fuels. And seeing as how I like safety in mind, we decided to modify it to operate on gaseous oxygen and alcohol. And we're running the same fuel that they use like in the V2. And uh, what you basically have here is a fuel tank, which is pressurized by this nitrogen. And uh, so your, uh, your regulator here drops it down to about 600, which pressurizes this tank. It has a siphon pickup, so that there's about three gallons in there. That's your fuel cell there. Yes. Okay. Then she comes up through this, uh, there's a long tube that picks up, goes through this uh, precision filter here. And then it goes down here into a ball valve. Okay, that's your throttle valve down there then? Yeah. Now if you'll notice the operation of these valves, don't throw rocks, you guys. Um, when you pull a valve open, you get oxygen. This is your large one is oxygen flow here. Okay. Well, you pull that open, you get oxygen flow. And then as you pull it further, the fuel comes out. the fuel on. comes into it, right. Yeah. Okay. What do you use for igniter then? Well, we have an electric igniter that normally hangs back here, but for testing, we're just using a torch. Okay. So we have, there's a 12 volt uh, ignition coil under there with a buzzer assembly. Okay, now everything goes through a check valve, and then it goes through a splitter. This engine, uh, we got it computed out to uh, 400 pounds of thrust at 10 cubic feet per second of oxygen and about a tenth of a gallon a second of alcohol. Uh, hopefully it should perform. So we're going to hear some noise and a little bit of fire today, right? Oh yeah, we Very are. Good. Well, best of luck there, Jeff. Okay, thanks a lot. And we'll see some on the test here. I don't want to melt the damn thing. It's all right. We'll just, it's already bent up anyhow. Cheap being the worst that'll milk. happen is we'll have us out here Monday painting it. <laughs> yeah, but what if it melts? It ain't free anyway. Yeah. Who cares if it melts? They ain't yeah. whoever owns it. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. He's an old drop. Yeah, just open it up slow and see what it does first.
Oh, yes. Yep, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is the way NASA would do it. that tank and then yeah, it shut off. I turned off the tank, okay? It's just burning inside there, ain't no thing, no problem there. Well, it really ablated that nozzle there. <laughs> Whoa. Boy, look at that nozzle. <laughs> Boy, that's, that really ablated it, didn't it? That's your problem. It had a lot more kick this time. Oh, yeah, I seen it push the cart. It would go. No, yeah, the chain, the chain was just... Was it really? Yeah, yeah. it was. It pulled tight when you went, once you fired it up. Yeah, but a hairbrush you, uh, consider it a success or what? <laughs> yeah, I'd consider it a real success. Uh, normally on driving the cart, as you can see, the nozzle got burned out. But for like a 10-second drag run, I'm sure you'd get at least three runs out of it before it burned out. We were probably running oxygen rich, and that's probably part of the reason the, the engine burnt like that. Do you any idea how long the burn time was? I'd say about 30 seconds. About 30 seconds, huh? That's not pretty good. And uh, I'm real happy because yeah, I've seen a cha strain on the chains. I know it'll go. Well, next time you got to put a strain gauge on, and then you'll know exactly what it's doing. Next time it's going to be uh, three small 20-pound uh, oxygen bottles, which will give you 10 pounds of burn. And I plan on driving it. Yeah. Okay. But I got to have a full flame suit before I'll get anywhere as near it. I'm, I have confidence in my work here, and I know it ran good. All right. Congratulations, there, Jeff. All right. What'd you think? So it's real people. Super work.